Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. All the source code for each video tutorial is located on my website at javacjava.com. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. This is part one of my switch statement tutorial. I'm going to go and open up my website here, javacjava.com. Click on the begin button. This will take you to the list of all the tutorials that I have here. And we'll go to the switch statement part one. This tutorial will introduce you to the basic functionality of the switch statement. The need for a switch statement evolved from several shortcomings of the if statement. The if statement works quite well in situations where the result of an expression will have relatively few outcomes. When, using, when things become more complicated, the power of the switch statement comes to the rescue. To demonstrate a simple difference between the two statements, I'll create some code that outputs the number of days in a month. An argument is passed in from the command line to determine which month we are requesting. First I'll code it using an if, else if, else statement, then I will code it using a switch statement. A basic switch statement structure looks like this. Switch keyword, then inside of parentheses you got the expression that we'll be evaluating, and then the result. Basically, the result will have to equal one of these case statements here, right? So, and these are just constant values for that. Um, now let's say, for example, we were evaluating an expression like uh, 5 plus 6, you know, something really simple like that. And we had case 10, case 11, case 12, right? Of course, that would equal case, case 11 here. Then everything after the semicolon um, would go ahead and execute if you have a statement or statements. And then you'll have this break keyword here. And I'll go over this break keyword in part 2 of the tutorial there. Now, if all of your case statements, if, not, if it doesn't equal any of them, you can have this optional default keyword down here where it'll go ahead and execute any statements there and then break. So think of the default kind of like if you're doing an if, else, if, else statement, the else is sort of the default there, like it didn't evaluate to anything, let's go ahead and do this, right? And the best way to learn a switch statement and how it works is actually by uh, seeing how it functions in, in actual code. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing we'll do is we'll go over like the if, else, if and everything like that. So you, and then I'll do the exact same thing in a switch statement. So we'll come down here, we'll highlight this, hit Control C, or you can right click, and select, right click and select Copy. Go ahead and move the browser off screen. Go to Start, Search, type in CMD. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to Start, Run, type in CMD. I'll bring open our command prompt there. First thing I want to do is type in Java C and you should see all this stuff just kind of scroll by. If you don't, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly. Let's type in CLS. I'll clear the screen. Then CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory and backslash will tell it to go to the root. I'll type in MD make directory Java. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create that folder for you. I'm going to type in MD, and we're going to call this uh, switch1. Yeah, that'll do it. And then CD switch1. We'll change directories to that, and we'll type in notepad. Switch1.java. Okay, switch1.java is going to be the name of our source code file, also known as a compilation unit. We'll hit Control v to paste that in. <clears throat> or you can right click and select hot, uh, paste. Okay, let's go ahead and save this here. So what we've got is, I'm going to move my, my screen back over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, after this is all said and done, after I go over this, we're going to do Java and then the name of the class we want to invoke and then we're going to pass an art, well an argument, we're going to specify an argument, command line argument, be specific of like March or various different months. We'll play around with all that there. So back to the code here. We're going to be receiving in the string array args parameter here. We should just basically have one value in there, one element at index number zero. And so we're going to check for the length. If it's not equal to one, then we're just going to print out invalid number of arguments and then return. This return keyword right here will basically terminate execution of the whole main method. So none of this will execute after we issue the, that, if this case, if this expression returns true. So, and you also know we don't have anything after the return keyword there, and that's because the main method is a void return type. All right, 
I've also initialized a number of ver number of days variables set it equal to zero. It's just basically my little temp variable that will assign it based on on what expression you know evaluates. Okay, so down here in the if statement, so I've got if and then I've got arg zero. We know this syntax from my previous tutorials. So basically, we're looking at the value of the index zero for that array, which is the first element, and checking to see if it equals January. Now, don't worry about the dot equals yet. I will cover it in great detail in a future tutorial. For now, just understand that dot equals is checking if the args, the element zero, or the, uh, sorry, the index zero, the first element, is essentially equal to a string literal of whatever month value we're checking it against, okay? Now, the string class, just to give you a little more detail there, the string class is not a primitive data type. It is an object, and it's a special one even then. So different rules apply when using the double equals is equal to operator there. Um, so we'll just kind of touch on that for now and go over that in a future tutorial. So basically, we're checking to see if the, um, if the argument that we specify in the command line is equal to January or if this, the arg0 parameter is equal to February or March. We can use those argument and parameters kind of interchangeably. Uh, if you've watched my previous tutorial, I went into detail on what the what this minute difference is. But anyway, so we're checking all those and then we're setting the number of days based on what we specify there. All fairly simple there. And if we don't specify a valid um, parameter here, we are going to print off invalid month argument. Now remember, Java is a case sensitive language, and the valid months are, and then I got all the months listed here with the escape sequence, the new line escape sequence. I thought, thought I'd throw that in there, you know, from previous escape sequence tutorial just to solidify your knowledge and stuff. So, and then we issue the return statement. So, none of this will get executed down here. That'll just go ahead and return it right there if we've got an invalid month argument. Okay, so now we check to see if the number of days is equal to 28. That's our special February one. So February has 28 days unless the year is evenly divisible by four. If so, it has 29 days, hence our leap year. Um, otherwise, we're just going to print out, you know, um, the value of the uh, element, the first element in the string array args, and then has, and then the number of days and days. So. Let's go ahead and run this here. Let's clear our screen. Pile out Java. So the first thing we're going to do is just pass it. In, uh, we're not going to specify any arguments. So no parameters will be um, received. So invalid number of arguments terminates right away. So let's go ahead and specify like March, right? Oh, March has 31 days, June, this is all just cruising along. Uh, Feb, February, boom, February has 20 days unless the year is even, evenly divisible by four. If so, it has 29 days, sweet, right on. Cruising along here. Um, I'm hitting the up arrow on the keyboard, by the way to get that to come back up, a little DOS shortcut. And then if I type in July, right, for example, notice that the July is not uppercase there, right? Invalid month argument, Java is a case sensitive language. Valid months are, and then we've got our list of valid months. So we get to play around with that there, right? Uh, we can type in whatever, you know, invalid month argument back here, May, boom, okay. So that is basically how that works with a nice if statement. And you can see this is all just kind of cluttery and, you know, when, when you get into some more complicated sort of stuff, it really becomes ugly if you would nested if, else, if, and everything like that. So we're basically comparing the same, um, doing the same expression comparison of this arg zero, right? for every single one of these. So this is a case where we're, where we're comparing, basically the result of a single expression is gonna result in many different outcomes. So let's go ahead and pop back here. And we will go down. Now we're gonna, and now I'll do the same thing only with a switch statement this time. So we're gonna switch back to Notepad, copy and overwrite the following code, save the file when you are done. <coughs>
Okay, I'm gonna hit Control A to highlight everything and then just delete it and then Control V to paste, or you could right click and select paste. I'm gonna go ahead and save this out here. And we've got essentially the same thing starting off here. And now here's where we're using the switch statement instead of the old um, if statement there. So we are just basically, um, the, the expression up there is we're just seeing what is the value of, of the string array args at index number zero, right? And if it's January, we'll set the number of days equal to 31 and then we'll break. February 28, March, so on and so forth there. So you can see how readable this is. This is so much more readable, so much better than the other there, right? And then our default here does exactly the same thing as that last else. We go ahead and print this off right here, and then we display that, okay? Now, um, this return right here is gonna do something interesting. We're gonna get a little error here and I'll, I'll explain why there. We won't be able to hit this break because if you put any code in after a return statement, right, in within the same code block, it's gonna cause a little error. And I wanted to show you that because sometimes people will be like, what, what did that do? So you can run, you can run into it quite often there. It's going to say unreachable statement, right? When you see this unreachable statement, basically you've got a line of code that could never possibly execute it and it knows it. It knows we're going to return, which means that all of this stuff will not execute, but it really, it gets irritated if you put a statement after the return that can't be executed and it knows it inside of a, inside of a code block, right? And basically all we do is just comment this out and then it'll all be happy there, so. And let's do Java, we'll do March again, right? March has 31 days, we'll do February. Yep, so basically you can see that it's comparing that value, it's setting the number of days based on that, and then it's coming down here. And then we've got our if statement down here that just compares the, you know, whether it's that special February month or Otherwise, it does that for everything there. Um, we'll go ahead and pass it an invalid argument, right? And we'll get that sort of stuff there. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, and just leave you with some final thoughts. So when the result of a single expression will determine many outcomes, the switch statement is far superior to the if statement. Now in my switch statement tutorial part two, I will discuss other powerful features of the switch statement. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.